Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to some Let's Play Motorsport Manager. This is a simulation game, very much like Football Manager, for example. Heck, it's even published by Sega. Different different developers, but same publisher. Um, but this one is all about going vroom vroom fast in some cars. It is an excellent game. It's It's been out for a while, and yet it's kind of rock solid. I wouldn't mind if they came out with a Motorsport Manager 2 at some point, but I gotta say, this bad boy really still holds up. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, with all the lack of uh, real-life sports these days, I thought, you know what, maybe I'll do a little bit of this. I've been playing on my own recently. I was like, let's just record some episodes. Now, I don't know exactly how far we're going to go with this. A big part of it will depend maybe on how into it the, the, you guys are, the, the viewers. But what I'm going to do is start off with, there's a couple of challenges. In the, well, actually, there's quite a few challenges available. Um, but there's a career challenge called the Underdog challenge over here and it's just like yeah there's no time limit there's nothing like that the idea is to start as the absolute worst team in the the sort of regular um formula leagues and get your way all the way up to the top go up through the leagues until you win the uh the world motorsport championship i think that's wmc over there I do the driver and team champions in the same year. This is probably something that this would take like at least a decade, like multiple, multiple seasons to get through. But the big thing is we're going to start as the worst possible racing group. Predator racing group. We're going to do that. Boom. You can't leave the team. If you get fired, you get kicked off. Uh, we're going to turn off the tutorials. We're going to have the sessions on medium length. Sure, we'll use pounds. We'll use this date format. My favorite date format is the uh, the ISO standard format, which is year, month, day. But, you know, as long as we can all agree that month, day, year is stupid. I mean, come on. That's just dumb. Um, let's make ourselves over here. So we're going to be Quill 18. Uh, and I'll put in my birthday. April. Oh, wait. I was just talking about the date format here. Do, do, do. Technically, in Canada, we use, like, every date format all the time, forever. It's very annoying. I'll leave the year in there so I can feel nice and young. And I don't know if it matters what country I'm from for this. In Football Manager, I think it does, because I think it gives you a little bit of A8. Uh, um, oh, continent! I'm like, where's Canada? <laughs> Canada starts with a C, right? I know I'm blind. I didn't realize I would pull down for uh, for continents. There we go. So we'll be Canuckian. We can choose our backstory. You can actually go with no backstory, which gives you no bonuses, which is super hard mode. Uh, X driver does make your drivers potentially a little bit better. Engineer lets you design parts a little faster, which is nice. Financial just makes everything 5% cheaper. Political gives you more voting power for changing the rules, and that's that. We're going to financial. I know it's not very exciting, but I think for a long course of game like this, it's going to matter. Uh, not quite enough hair at the top, but good enough. We're going to do that. Oh, should we throw some glasses on? Yeah, there we go. It looks kind of okay. So there's a lot of different series available. Because of the challenge we're doing, we have to do the single series, single seater series. But yeah, there's the GT series, Grand Touring. Uh, and the Endurance series, which is like the sort of Le Mans, uh, WEC kind of, you know, World Endurance series kind of stuff. Uh, even if you're not into the uh, the racing games, trust me, this is going to get good real soon. So we're starting down here in the European Racing Series. Again, these are locked just because we're doing the challenge. Normally, you could, you could start at the top and you could pick the best team. It's good, totally okay. But we're locked in on the challenge here, so we're going to start down in the ERS. And for our team, we have to take the Predator Racing. Everything else, I believe, will be locked by default. Yeah, there it is. Predator Racing, the worst league in the European Sports League. It probably doesn't help that this is Australia, which last time I checked isn't anywhere near Europe. Although, Dragon is from China, Octane is from Canada. Uh, I don't know where all of them are, but yeah. So we're starting at the bottom. We're expected to finish 10th out of 10 teams. Expected to finish 10th. Really low pressure. We have uh, the worst in everything. So this is, you know, how good is our car? It's garbage how good of our drivers they're garbage and so on and so forth the one thing we've got is not literally the worst pit crew in the entire league but that is small comfort holy crap so if you're actually doing this challenge um you really everything you do is going to be about the future right um you're gonna just you're gonna lose the first few seasons like you're gonna come in last the first few seasons if you know because you could potentially get some short-term gains and not come in dead last be very difficult to win the first season but you could come in not dead last but that would probably require investing things that um you know for the short term versus the long term and really long term is kind of what we have to base ourselves on i don't know if this is going to be particularly exciting watches us just lose 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 but we're going to do what we can uh let's go through let's go through the mail first of all and see what it says and then we'll deal with uh, taking a look at who our peeps are so welcome to the group. Yeah, we started a management career there. Excellent. Um, 
he's okay so this is tommy my assistant inez i believe is one of my drivers yep he's some kind of millionaire right yeah we'll see and then william evans is our other driver guy with the fat staff did i just buy the team is that the idea i suppose so design factory report on our drivers so inez santa ana is predicted to come in 19th and william evans is predicted to come in 20th because there's 10 teams uh two primary drivers per team so we're, we're expected to come in last in everything excellent what are our targets we're gonna say that we are we're gonna be very very um um confident in our efforts and we're gonna predict that we come in 10th over here that way we can't possibly disappoint anyone yeah we get less money but it's gonna be okay and then we meet the pit crew okay let's take a look at our car situation now in the european sports league at the start of the game there are two spec parts the front wings and the rear wings are just fixed you cannot improve them uh in any way whatsoever every driver every car uses exactly the same front and rear wings but the rest of the parts can be worked on um wow that is uh wait seriously they are really bad because like these numbers here should be at least double digits potentially triple digits the other cars oh my god no wonder this team is terrible like this 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 engine barely moves oh this is awful um we are going to start improving some parts um and we're going to throw some reliability in here just so that we don't break down completely although again i mean well i mean maybe we won't come in last every race uh the big thing is i want to improve the engine parts the engine reliability right away um, and the reason for that is the engine, if it does break down mid-race, it's one of the things that takes the longest to fix. It's also the thing, if you are going to race like uh, with aggressive speed settings, it just burns through your engine's reliability. So if you want to be able to race at anything other than just like average engine burn, you really have to boost the reliability. Now my mechanics here, he's got a reliability score of three. Tom's got a reliability score of two. Oh my god, they're both garbage at doing this. Even with like having all of our staff all allocated purely to this, it's still going to take 19 days after our first race before we max out the reliability, but we'll still get some. Um, I might work on the um, the performance a little bit too, which is just garbage. Even with no staff allocated to it, um, Tom Woodbridge over here will give us a little bit of performance boost per day. Uh, I mean, it's still not going to be a thing. Out of curiosity, if we swung this over this way. We could get our engine per, uh, uh, performance maxed out before the race. But the thing is, the max is really low. The max is 18 and 17. Like, these are just the worst. It's not even close. Take a look at our headquarters. We've got a level one factory, level one design center. I think that's the minimum you can start with. And it's really bad. And it's going to take us millions to build new buildings or to upgrade new buildings. Just millions of dollars. And this is really our big long-term improvements as much as possible uh, that we can do. Our pit crew over here, this is a play... I'm sorry, do we only start with a quarter million? So I could hire a extra pit crew and that would be about it. <sighs> so you need six when you race. Two of them just run the front and rear jacks. And then everyone else is doing a combination of uh, working on the tires and helping to refuel. So, you know, there's a little bit of min-maxing that you can sort of do in position here, and you can hire some people. This cost per race doesn't seem very high, but it's 200 grand to hire a new one. Um, whew, that is that is rough. We're going to do some scouting. We're going to start by scouting all of the drivers, first of all, who are not currently um, on a team. We're going to scout them. Hiring people isn't cheap. If we can find pay drivers, but I actually don't know... How you can identify a pay driver so some people are looking for um are looking for experience behind the wheel and actually will pay you to race i don't think we've got any cost per race is negative yeah so these are not a pay drivers as far as i know unless it shows up somewhere else so who do we have inez over here hates dueling Ooh. Only applies when there's exactly one other car within one second of the driver attack. Okay, so one-on-one -on -one makes her super uncomfortable. But she's grounded. She has a really good relationship with the mechanic. Markability is only 2%. This is going to be one of the big issues that we're going to want to uh, work on. Because um, improving marketability will in increase the sponsors we get, which is really nice. Um, William Evans here has 27% marketability. He sucks in the wet. He doesn't like passing people he's a team player wow these people are just awful he's zero zero under um overtaking 
He's actually sitting at a minus two? Or, hold on, how does this actually... Is that the total of the number? I mean, he, I don't think you can go below zero. Um, the thing I was always wondering about, though, is is this number the base number, then getting modified by minus two? Like, is his natural overtaking zero? Or is his natural overtaking, you know, potentially as high as two, but it's getting a minus two? Yeah, I don't know if this is the final number. I think this is the final number that we're seeing here. Um, so if we got rid of action averse, potentially it would be above zero, although it's possible it is still naturally zero. And anyway, it's hard to tell. Anyway, we've got them. Everything is garbage. Who's our designer here? Charlotte Williams? Um, wow. You're really bad. Your best design trait could be suspension. And even then, it's just... By the way, these go up to 20. That's why I'm saying these are really bad. These numbers go up to 20. <laughs> uh, you do know some components, though, which is kind of interesting. All right, pit crew. We've got a little bit of scouting. I mean, we could look at hiring other people, but we don't have any, any money right now, so I don't think that makes much sense. All right, let's take a look at our sponsors. So here's our vehicle. Um, we will be able to change our livery for free every season, so we could pay to uh, to um, to change the colors, but I think it's half a million, so not much more reason to do that now. All right, let's take a look at the race sponsors over here. So these guys here will sometimes have an upfront payment, so you can see why Che, why uh, Wan Chai. All right, has an upfront payment, whereas uh, Gender Mole does not. Um, here, though, if you finish a race above a certain position, you get the race bonus. The thing is, we're going to expect that we're going to come in 19th and 20th every race. So we'll just take someone with an upfront payment over there, and all of a sudden we've um, quadrupled our money from a quarter million to a cool million. Uh, and then we have fixed payment. These guys just pay you a fixed amount regardless of placement. They might still be a mix of upfront and per day. Um, actually, I should wait a little bit longer before I do this until right before the race, because there might be some more. The, the flat income, the flat money was okay because we could actually use a little bit of a print cash, but that's about it. Now, do we want to start designing a part right away? Because one of the things is, from season to season, your parts do carry over, okay? So, um, sort of, kind of. Basically, your best two parts in each one of the categories that you have. So, like, let's say we design a bunch of engines. In the end, we're going to have a bunch of engines in here. At the end of the day, uh, the two best engines you have are going to get locked in for the next season. They'll become your new baseline. Um... And so one of the big things we want to do for this is even if we're not using the parts because we never bothered to improve the reliability or whatever, we want to try to end up with like two decent baseline items in each one of these categories so that uh, they, they can improve year to year. Uh, so it's not about doing well this year. It's about trying to get some half decent stuff next year. Tell you what, suspension is the thing we have one of our be better traits in. So let's go ahead and start working on that now. Okay. Here's one of the things. The So when you go and design your part, I mean, you could just design the part as is, that's fine. But then there's also these extra component slots that you can lock in to give an even bigger boost. Uh, so it looks like right now, um, if we look at our suspension, hold on. If we look at our current suspension, what do they look like? Yeah, 19 and 19 and not really all that improvable. Um, if we go here... This one's going to start at 25 and can improve up to 32. So you can see it gets a plus six from the designer um, because of her level. It's not stupendous, but it's something. Um, it's only the performance, the, which is the baseline number that gets carried over. So um, it's the trait, in this case, for the suspension, it's the trait that says medium speed corners. If we're looking for like building for the future, we want to get this number as high as possible. Whereas the maximum doesn't matter so much, the reliability doesn't matter so much. Some of these parts are technically out of spec. There's in racing, there's there's guidelines about how good certain components could be because they, they want to, you know, still to a certain extent be a driver's competition and not things get too ridiculous, so they sort of put limitations on certain things. Um, we can risk and have illegal parts. You know, these, I don't know, they, they, they go down too low or too high or whatever would be inappropriate for suspension and racing thing. I don't know. Um, so this would be illegal, but you can see that the traits are insane. Now, we can, at the end of the season, just design one of these parts, not necessarily ever race it, just to get huge numbers. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with this. Getting the initial, the reliability boost will actually be pretty useful early on. I mean, we're still probably going to come in last and everything, but, you know, sure. So we're going to start designing that part. It's going to cost us $800,000. Sure. I mean, we've got some more sponsors we can grab. It'll be okay, right? 
All right, so we're going to start that working. We're, we're still improving some parts. We can go scouting for people. We can do whatever, but I don't think... I think we'll, we'll go looking for better uh, drivers later is going to be the idea. Uh, all right, new manager. Richard. Okay, one of the racers is going to retire. Fan reaction. Uh-huh. Interview request. Well, you've certainly picked a tough task for your first job. You're expecting to pick up many points this season. Um... I don't know. Should we just be realistic here? It'll be a struggle. No doubt. Win a few points would be wonderful. Make a difference to our budget. Uh, this dropped the happiness of our chairman. Um, our drivers. They're both going to have to impress me. Okay, the happiness, the, the chairman liked that, but we dropped the morale on the drivers. I'm not answering these questions in a way that actually makes my drivers happy, but I'm okay with this here. I'm actually hoping to see if we can maybe trigger um, a marketability boost or something like that. Uh, expected to come in 10th. Um, I don't know. Tell you what, I'll say it seems fair, but I'm hoping we're going to surprise you. Uh, that didn't do anything. Uh, f financial skills are in doubt. Some pundits are skeptical whether or not you belong in the world of motorsports. Oh, right. That's what everyone tells me I'm a, a big money bags. That's right. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't good enough. I can't wait to prove everyone wrong. There we go. Team marketability goes up. That's going to be really nice for our sponsors. So we'll just keep going for now. Suspension design is finished. There we go. And the next race. So we're going to be at the Black Sea. 30 lap race. 2.6 miles. Record. Some rain during the race. 40% chance. Uh... Yeah, it's a very curvy race, so there's not a lot of opportunity to reach top speed. Acceleration is important, so gearbox and stuff would be really nice. We don't have any of that. So you can see top speed, acceleration, and high speed corners are crucial. None of these are part of our suspension thing, but I'm still okay with having worked on that first. Now, we can't start designing another park because we ain't got the money, ain't no way, ain't no how. I'm going to drop one of these engine projects here. And so we've got our new suspension. It's only got that initial 50% reliability. Um, we're going to work on improving it, and I'm going to drop out one of these engines again and just work on the reliability of our suspension. Actually, maybe what I'll do is I'll drop you out. So we'll have all of our staff just working the suspension just to try to get it a little higher, because right now this would be way too likely to break. We can still choose a sponsor. Still going to wait a little bit before we travel to the back seat, especially with their increased marketability. Maybe we will get some new choices, and we did. Actually, three new ones. Okay, they're just an extra slot, but still. Um, so, yeah, we're never getting second or above, so all we're going to care about is we're going to grab the upfront payment, which ain't much, but at least this deal is only for four races, and then it'll cycle to something else. We'll take the 100k for now, because we are desperate. Uh, so you'll just pay me 350000 per race, that seems fine. 150000 over here, that seems fine as well. And again, performance doesn't matter. Okay, we're about to do the race. Um, we will get a chance to fit parts before we go. We have to choose a sponsor for the race. We're going to choose Rogerson's Ales. If we have anyone finish 16th or above, we'll get an extra 200 grand. And man, wouldn't that be nice. All right. So now we have to adjust the parts. Really, the only question is the new suspension. And it is it is clearly more performant than um, the old one. Old one's 19. New one's at 35 currently. It's not as reliable, but yeah, it'll be fine. Oh, something I forgot. In finances... Set budget next year's car. So from every race, we can put some money aside as part of the budget for next year's car. We're actually going to go as low as possible over here. And the reason for that is what I want to do is I would love to upgrade my headquarters and things first. Um, we can keep going with crap cars for a little bit, although we're going to try to see if we can get some base performance on some of our components up. Because that would be really, really, really useful. All right. Black Sea Grand Prix. going to be our first race. But again, prepare yourself. We're coming in 19th and 20th. Almost. Well, that's not true. Someone might crash. <laughs> oh, I didn't look at the weather report on the last screen, actually, I think. Uh, or maybe it's on this one for the two, just to see. We don't have a weather tracking station, so our ability to get really accurate minute-to-minute -minute weather is a little bit questionable. For the practice here, it looks like it's going to be cloudy into sunny. Uh, about 11 degrees Celsius, so cool but dry. And yet, indeed, water on track is nothing. Now, again, we're expecting some water on the track on um, on a, the actual race day. So we could actually consider doing a little bit of testing on inter intermediary tires just to see. Um, so these are our two primary drivers, Inez and Williams. But we have a we have a backup driver, Katie. She actually has better feedback. 
Um, what we might do is get her to run the practice. Plus, um, by running at all, it gives her a chance to get a little bit of experience, and that's going to be quite nice. Um, let's talk about the tire situation. So, there are so wet tires are when the track is soaking wet. So when you see the uh, the track over here, when it gets to like the midway point and beyond, um, that's when you can really do well with wet, especially if it's like more than about 60% wet. And then the intermediates over here are when the track is is wet or damp, but not necessarily overdoing it. And then your slicks is when it's completely dry. And generally speaking in the races, there will be two different types of slicks presented. Um, one will be softer, one will be a little harder. The harder uh, tires last longer. Uh, the softer ones are just stickier and faster. Um, one of the big parts of the, uh, the the strategy of this game is to sort of figure out how many pit stops you might want to do. Because of the size of the fuel tank and various things, you are more or less going to be required to do at least two. Um, and potentially three. And that mostly comes down to, yeah, the softness of your tires and how, how hard you are driving them. I think for us, really what we're gonna do is probably go for like the less soft tires, just go for two pits. And I don't really don't think it's gonna matter too much. But yeah, we're gonna choose soft as opposed to super soft for our tires. And that's what we're gonna practice in as well. So we've got that. Um, we also have to make some tweaks to the car. So this green area, so these are our various things that we can tweak about our car. Wing angles, all kinds of different stuff. And these have impacts on all kinds of values here. Well, mostly it breaks down to three categories, downforce, handling, and speed balance. The uh, orange tick is what we'd be going out with. The gray tick is what we were last time, which was just the default starting thing for this car. And then finally, the green area is where the mechanic thinks we should line, uh, we should end up in. Now, this is a very curvy track, um, not really much in the way of straightaways, as we can see here. So really it is gonna be about lots of downforce, lots of acceleration. We wanna be able to stick to the roads in the corners and then break away from that pretty quickly. We're gonna stiffen up the suspension. I'm gonna give, um, uh, interesting that they're actually looking for reduced tire camber or less negative tire camber. Cause usually having the tires like flared out like this is better for corners, but it depends on, on the particular corner. Um, We'll, we'll start with this. It's sort of in the recommendation. It seems okay. Uh, so this is just for a practice run. So we're gonna do some practice runs and then figure out how we feel about that. Uh, we'll have to make some adjustments to, or no, sorry, that was Santa Ana's car? Yeah, okay, so Katie's car. Well, it's not gonna be Katie's car, um, but she's running the practice. Uh, see, the mechanic here thinks we want low downforce for this, and I don't believe that at all, at all, at all. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more downforce right to start off with. We'll stiffen up the suspension. Um, and I'm actually gonna shorten the gear ratios because I think we're gonna need a fair bit of that. We are gonna change to the softs as well. Okay. So, we're gonna start the practice. We could simulate it, but I really do like to run the practice myself. What we're going to do is we're gonna send out both cars and send them out the back-to-back. -back. It's gonna be okay here for this. Um, and I'm gonna tell them basically right away to come back in after this. We're gonna get just, it's gonna do not even a full lap because it's just gonna be like pit out to pit in. But I want an immediate feedback about how the car feels. Now we'll get some little pop-up notifications and then when they um, get back to the pit, we can get a little bit more of a breakdown about how things work. So, right over here, Lenares up in front. And they're both gonna pull in. Do, do, do. There we go, into the pit lane. So, barely any info, really. But I wanted to know if we're, like, way out of whack or not. Okay, great downforce, great hand... How... Okay, there is another level above this, which is excellent. But at 94% optimum balance, this would be pretty decent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore the mechanics recommendation. I'm going to add a little bit more downforce. And it saves this, by the way. We can, we can go back to uh, some of these configurations. Um, I'm gonna give it a little bit more negative camber. So everything's been tweaked ever so slightly. So I'm gonna send you back out on that. Now each car is gonna need a different profile. Each car runs a little bit differently. So you're not gonna end up in exactly the same place. So this car, they're really unhappy. Um, and the other one is like a little higher up, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more downforce to this. Um, There we go. Just move things a little. I don't think we moved the handling enough. Actually, we didn't move this enough either. Let me go a little crazier with this. 
because where we are now is poor. We're clearly going to have to end up further away. Either this is going to become very poor, or it's going to move towards good or great over here. We'll find out next time. So we'll send yet again. We might get in a couple of laps here with Lenares, because she's pretty close. Especially if we get some messages. Well, if it says something got worse, we'll bring her in right away. Uh, the second car, I am going to bring on that lap, because it's so far from anything good. So I'm just waiting for a message. We'll let her do a, a lap. We'll keep them on basic strategy here. So she's going to do her first flying lap. And then over here, we've got a pit. Okay. So Santa Ana, what's your car situation here? Did it get worse? It got worse. The problem is, we don't know where... We, we actually don't know where the downforce should be yet. Because it didn't become very, like, like very poor. Which would have told me we went in absolutely the wrong direction. Um, let's try the complete opposite direction with the downforce. Let's remove a lot of it. Oh, the handling became great. So at least there's that. Always start with the downforce because it affects so many other things, uh, but nothing affects the downforce. So once you're locked in on doubt force, you know you don't have to mess with it too much. Um, so first was there. It became great over here. So I'm inclined to think that it might be over here and the mechanic doesn't really know what they're talking about. Our acceleration was good there. So yeah, we just, we need a lot more acceleration. Let's just, I mean, those are really short gear ratios. But we're just desperately trying to find a place for this driver. Meanwhile, this car, we may let, um, so this is not her outlap. So first there's the outlap, out from the pit lanes. This is on their first real lap. What I'll do is I'll, I'll let her finish this and then I'll bring her in. Really happy with the gear ratio is nice. And over here, I've got to bring Santa Ana in right away. Like, we're desperately just trying to find something vaguely appropriate for that car setup. We really want her to get a lot of race knowledge. Um, so more laps is good for that. Oh, hello! Now we're talking. We just happened to land on excellent for the downforce and the handling. The speed balance is, is quite poor. And I, I think it might be more like that. So it was good when it was around here. So, and it hasn't been getting any better as I move to the left. So I'm going to try on the other side and see what happens. But note, while the downforce stays the same, changing the gear ratios does affect the handling. So, um, I don't know about the tire camber here. There we go. So the handling's in the same place. Speed balance is dramatically changed. And there we go. She got brought in here. We're going to take a look. We did get the excellent downforce on this car. And that's great, because then we know we don't have to move it again. The handling is great in both places. The speed balance um, is not as good. Um, great and great. I don't know where to guess for the handling. We might just leave it there. What I'm going to do is bring the... Well, it's going to move a little, but it's still going to be okay. So it's great there. Sorry, was it good or great? It was great. So now we're going a little bit more top speed balanced than when we were at great. And so it'll at least be great. It might end up being on fantastic and everything else is the same here. I'm going to feel confident to just let her go and rip out a bunch of laps now. Because what we want to do is bring up our knowledge of soft tires as well as the racing trim. In some competitions, there's a qualifying round um, and you might have a couple of different configurations for qualifying versus um, racing. Because in qualifying, for example, you don't tend to have to pass as much. Well, I mean, it depends on the situation. But some of the things are a little bit different. Perfect gear ratios. I like that. Okay. More setup levels going up. That's nice as well. So, yeah, just get a bunch of those in there. So, you might say, if this competition doesn't have qualifying, how do you choose the order of the starting grid? It's actually in reverse order from the pilot's ranking. Pilot. Driver's rankings. So, there's a good chance our drivers will start... Um, every race um, in the front. Not maybe at first. There you go. Practice is done. Um, but as everyone, all the other drivers get points and we don't, we will start the race in the front and then just keep getting passed every time. But it's a bit of an equalizer. So about half the fields are running on softs, half the fields about on super softs. Uh, we did come in with the two worst qualifying times. Although, almost not the worst, but pretty bad. Or not qualifying times, practice times. 
which again aren't used for anything but we'll give you a bit of a hint if we get 16th or above we'll get that bonus which is nice okay now it's race day we do have both our drivers not not a reserve anymore uh william evans is starting in first uh and then santa ana in 12th position over here um we'll take the race trim we actually may not run on soft the whole time our mechanic here has the engine expert to keep the engines in higher conditions which is going to be nice because we could uh santa ana could really run at a higher intensity which would be lovely race trim uh i can't get the sweet spots over here oh for that's for qualifying so we'll take the soft tires information take a look at the weather um we're not aware of any rain coming so it's looking dry right now it might still rain later in the day um if we had better forecast centers we could get more information going forward um and yeah the grip as the rubber gets laid down on the asphalt you the car's grip improves a little bit over time which is neat um they're pretty pleased with that uh, did we have a better handling at any point for here no okay i'm gonna be kind of okay with this configuration uh, i'm gonna save you and i'm gonna go back over here and i will save this one so that way next year when we're at this track if it's in the same configuration which it might not be we could start with 98 percent balance this is really really good we're gonna use the soft tires and we are gonna start fully fueled yeah we're gonna we're gonna go for two stops and relatively conservative behavior here um because our drivers really can't do anything else our biggest our biggest priority is mostly going to be not to crash um santa and anna can drive with a higher um engine thing and not get as much wear which is nice normally at the start of the race what you would do is this because it's in a big pack you want to pass people all those sorts of things um our car would probably shatter at this point if we ran something like this um and we're not really going to stay up at the front anyway so i will um we're our best thing is to guarantee just two pits which i mean isn't that hard to do i will run her on high engine mode because her engine can handle it um but williams is even in the front i'll just be cat people have to pass him it's going to be fine remember we have like no overtake so we can't really compete for things if people pass us and they will because our cars and our drivers are garbage like we just have to accept it and just try to reduce the chance of a crash which is more likely if you drive more aggressively all right here we go it is a beautiful day here at the black sea grand prix santa Ana and in the front we can watch him for a little while take a look at the tire temperature uh, it is a bit of a cooler day we actually may have to run we could run potentially a little more intense with the tires actually just to keep them warm if nothing else all right we'll we'll move you both up to a push here um if you're in overtake mode it is particularly hard on the engine i mean maybe we could run we could run high high to start off with that wouldn't be so bad santa Ana already lost the spot all right let's bring the speed up evans there we go second third fourth fourth i mean we're just getting past on the straights this is not always being outdriven if you if you get past in the corners it's like sort of you know the driver being outdriven it's it's also the car's performance and those sorts of things but on the straights it's just like pure like well we're all just stepping on a gas right <laughs> although how much speed you you come out of a corner is certainly a big thing santa down in 17th evans down in 11th almost certainly we're gonna end up in the last two if by some miracle we can end up with someone 16th or above and snag that sweet 200k bonus that would be absolutely lovely but i don't have a lot of faith there's a 2d mode over here which actually i find quite informative for some things but we'll do the 3d we can zoom in as well a little bit if we want for a little bit more action so evans is still you know ahead for the drivers oh green's over here these means he's got better time than his previous lap so white in the sectors mean that they uh they have the same speed as what they've been doing mostly green is a better lap than they've done in the past and purple is like the fastest lap of anyone so far all right 60 percent tires still have lots of fuel uh, let me pull back a little on the tire wear here because i think they might be the first to go now you will at 30 percent tire wear you'll get a warning about low tires and then they're going to start bitching about it and a lot of things online say you know don't let your tires go below 25 percent it's actually a little fuzzier than that if we were on hard tires which were not available today you can ride hard tires all the way down to zero at zero percent the tires like pop so don't go to zero but you can basically ride them all the way down if you're on mediums i think you can go to five percent softs is oh no maybe i'm getting this wrong hold on because it goes by five percent increments soft at medium five percent soft at 10 super soft at 15 ultra soft at 20 that might be it but if you hit those numbers then that's when they get like the huge performance fall off 
But the point is, you don't have to freak out right at um, at 25%, uh, despite what other people say. Now, Evans has got a little bit more tire wear. Uh, the fuel as well. I want to avoid having them both pit at the same time. Because what would happen there is uh, the uh, pit would be just too full. So, um, I guess I'm going to pit uh, Evans on this go. We'll get the soft tires. Um, we will fill up your tank. Although... One, two, the thing. You know what? We can we can save a little bit of time in the pit and a little bit of weight by not completely brimming you. Because we will leave with 11.21 laps of fuel left. There's 22 laps left. If we're not increasing our engine mode, we're not going to run them any faster. Parts are decreasing, but they've still got some time before the um, the, the pit or the um, uh, the red line. We'll do a balanced pit stop for this. We, there's no reason we have to be like super competitive or anything like that. So, there we go. Santa Ana's passed the pit lane. We're going to get her pit on the next orbit, the next lap. Um, and, yeah, she's only going to have a 21 thing. We'll do the same thing. About 11 laps of fuel in there. Parts, nothing about to go critical. And the balanced pit stop, that's going to be okay. All right. Pits are happening. Most of the field is still on softs as opposed to semi-stops. We can see there's going to be some more pit stops coming. There, she's at 25% now. Yeah, so it turns red, but I think on softs we're okay. Is it? Because I don't think anything has the giant drop of 25. It's 20%, 15, 10, 5, I think. Anyway, I just know that hards are zero. And then you work backwards from there. All right, good pit stop. Oh, your strategy, yeah, still, we're going to go and bring those down a little. I don't know, maybe we can just keep running high. Well, we're, we're actually taking a fairly conservative fuel strategy. And we're just hoping maybe some of these will pit three times. Ooh, Marquetta actually has a uh, mechanical issue. So he's had to do repairs. So that's an extra long pit. It's too bad no one's crashed. That would help our placement. That's really what we're hoping for. Um, Evans is in 16th right now. Not really expected to last. Oh, uh, uh, John Nostier is actually having some mechanical issues too. So he's going to have a longer pit. Oh, a little bit. I think this green car just came out of the pit lane and sort of stopped some things up for a little while. So yeah, very, very unexciting um, race behavior here because we're just we're just staying on the conservative side because really that's about all we can do because even if we drove aggressively, I'm not sure much was going to happen. Um, and then we'll see on like the last couple of lanes exactly how much juice we might have left over. I mean, maybe I should have started everyone in double red at the thing, but the, the fact of the matter is I think we would have just obliterated our engines, although no one else could really hold the double red for very long either. It was like quite popular to start the race, maybe in like the softest tires during the most competitive bit, and then go to the endurance ones afterwards. Because depending on how you manage it, you might still be able to do that in only the two stops, which would be all right. So yeah, I'm not going to increase the tire aggressiveness. So by default, you use, say, one lap of fuel every lap. As you go and boost this up, I believe high will take 1.1 quote-unquote lap worth of fuel per lap overtake will take 1.3 the tire mechanic is about the same there's expected wear and then it goes up by little bits here and there evans oh you know what allow teammate through that's true santa Ana's our better driver evans let santa Ana through yeah, santa Ana's better driver just better chance of maybe maintaining something we will see meanwhile evans is down to 40 percent on his tires so still lots of fuel i could increase my fuel consumption here to sort of match the uh, the tire stuff a little bit, but then that might require a longer pit as well. So we'll see. Um, maybe we'll have you go a little faster so that there's less. Ooh, you're having some gearbox issues. Yes, yes, you are. Okay, we'll get you to pit on this lap. We'll give you fresh tires. Um, 13 laps after the pit stop. Wait, really? Oh, because we're pitting early. Hang on. Cancel. Sorry, Evans, you're going to have to do one more lap on your dodgy gear gearbox. I feel bad, but otherwise we'll need yet another stop. So, okay, there we go. There's the pit lane entrance. I mean, I could have done it any time, but let's do it now. Done. 12 laps remaining. 12. We may have to do a little bit of eco. We'll see. We are going to fix the gearbox. Uh, so it's a 32 second pit, and we really have no real option. Luckily, everyone's car is kind of garbage for the first race. A lot of people working out issues, haven't gotten the reliability up. 
And yeah, I don't want to pit Santa Ana at the same time. Switch to medium. Well, I mean, you're going to get a full tank of gas regardless, actually. So, yeah, tire wear is pretty bad. And you've got some conditional things. Okay, 11.84, so you'll be good there. Yeah, we'll fill that up completely. Um, oh, that's really bad. I was hoping to get away with it without this for the 16th place finish. Now, the fact we have to do this makes me think we're not going to end up 16th place at all. We tried. Oh, that was an extra long pit. No mistakes, but... I mean, he's feeling good. 8.2 driver performance is actually fairly nice. We're not getting the notice that we have too much fuel. I'm sorry, we have to ignore your brakes. Well, I mean, you're going to come in last anyway. We'll probably pull you in. I mean, what difference does it make? Okay, you do have excess fuel, so we can actually keep going on the high mode for now. Ooh, actually, excess fuel kicked in here as well. All right, so excess fuel is when you're predicted to have one full extra lap. Oh, we got flagged. This We just got overtaken by the second place. Um, so there we go, and then we can pop back down to normal. So yeah, one extra lap of fuel is when it says excess fuel. And then it'll say low fuel when you've got less than a lap predicted. So you can sort of gauge that. Oh, blue flag over here. We're being passed by second place. And yeah, we're like miles behind 18. We're 10 seconds behind 18th place. So unless they break down and have to do another pit, that ain't going to happen. I mean, this is exactly what was expected. But oof. Big oofs. All right. Eight laps remaining. We still don't want to go crazy and start pushing things. Let's go up to speed 12. I mean, there's a lot of laps left. How bad are these brakes? I don't know. Partially still hoping that something can happen here, depending on these pit times, and if we don't have to pit. Oh, we've got excess fuel. Let's run you. And a few decent laps in. All right, quite a bit of tire wear. Are you? Oh, yeah, you're down to 30%. Maybe because your brakes are so busted? All right, you know what? We may as well pit you. Here, we'll give you super softs for the end. Um, you're going to be fine on fuel. I'm going to fix the brakes. We'll try a fast one. Still being lapped by some things. Out of those brakes, 20%. Well, I guess no one's pitting anymore. Like, we're not gonna get anything else. But it is your last lap, right? Oh, uh, no, you're no, you're on lap 28. Never mind. We'll do the same thing here. You've got that. One lap remaining after this. We don't have to do anything. Yeah, we'll do a last minute break thing. Just because I don't want you to actually, like, collapse and crash. Since we're already gonna come in last, apparently. Maybe it's going to be more exercise for a pit crew. It's final lap, but not for us. We're only in lap 28. Okay, you've got an appropriate amount of fuel, as do you. We'll put you both on medium here. Although, you can rip apart your tires. Low fuel, final lap, though. Yeah, you're going to be fine. There you go. All right, last two places. Oh, no, not not literally the last two, because Gerard crashed, which is good, actually. Gerard's normally a really good driver. <sighs> well, there you have it. So we can look at other people's tire strategies to see what they did. You know, so two softs, two softs, super soft, soft, triple softs. So, I mean, it's hard to see, like, well, what's the, the dominant thing? Because in the top, th like... Well, okay, top three was all two stoppers, but sometimes you'll see triples, and you're seeing lots of triple stoppers in the top ten. And yeah, you can see the different tire grades here. All right, continue. Scrutineering, check and see if there's any illegal cars. Ours is not. For all we know, someone else might have had, but we... Oh, no, someone did! There was actually a time penalty given to someone. And there we go, dead last. Not a surprise. Predator, I want to see Predator racing at the top. Just love those guys. William Evans is so hot. Oh, my. I mean, he does have a little bit of marketability, so it could be a thing. I don't know. Bum, 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 bum. All right. Uh, did we get any changes to stats? 
All right, some morale improvements, because the thing is, yeah, they came out badly in the race, but they, they were expected. So everything, oh, Cheerman is happy. If we can beat expectations, our markability will go up, and that's one of the advantages to having really low expectations. Mechanic relationship, a little bit of skill ups, no skill over here on a reserve driver. Um, we get 1.3 million from this, Charman's pay Chairman's payments. The sponsor, yep. Pay out the pit crew, pay out money towards next year's cars, but we're trying to keep that low. All right. Done and done. We've got enough money to design another part, which we're going to do. Um, we actually have enough money to design an engine. Which I think I might do here. Oh, we got an interview. Um, if I say this, it'll upset my drivers, but... Personality trait added. Uh, he's open to discussing terms with us. Okay, that might be, that might be all it does. Hard one battle. Car. So first we have to repair the car from the last one. Um, let's design a part. So yeah. Oh, it's 1.5 million for the engine. That might be a little much. Uh, gearbox is used. You know, it's kind of important. Let's do that. Uh, we're going to give it the plain old plus 20% acceleration boost here. It's going to be okay. Now, we don't know how many of these parts we'll be able to do. And we just want to make sure we've got a boost to our performance, our baseline performance for it to carry over to the next year's car. Uh, what was this here? Oh, scouting report, yeah. So, if we go to improve parts now, um, we're still working on the suspension, which is fine. We got that original engine, which is fine, but what I wanna do, our new, oh no, we're designing the gearbox, right. Um, although still, do that and then we can add in something else, or I could just add in some more things right away. Um, but continue to work on engine import, uh, improvements makes sense. Okay, I'll go with something like that. That's going to be fine. Um, let's scout. I'm just going to queue up like a ton of scouts for people who are in the European skate uh, um, racing league. Oops. Uh, we might preferentially... Stop clicking on them. So say we might preferentially want to scout uh, younger because they're going to be cheaper but might still be a lot of potential. We will see. Mm -hmm. And more than anything, we would be looking for maybe a high marketability uh, driver. Might not be this year. Might not be this year. All right, gearbox design is done. Uh, I don't need to fit it quite yet, but what I'm going to do is this. Keep working on reliability. 79%, the uh, the suspension is, is ready to go anyway. So we're just going to try to improve the new parts that we built, because we're definitely going to be using those. Um, and then we'll probably go back to, I don't know what. Someone might be retiring. Scouting reports, that's fine. Well, I guess we'll put a cut in here. So this is a racing event from another another league. So not one of the ones I'm into. So Munich is in 10 days. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll put a cut right there. And then next episode, we are going to travel to Munich and lose another race. Oh, I'm so excited for it, you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.